We're going to attempt a partial fractions question here so as to check we understand. Just before we launch into it, we have to express the following as the sum of partial fractions. Remember that to do this, we need to at the end actually write out our final answer. Notice that the top has order 1, the bottom has order 2, so it's one of our simple standard results. Part B, we're going to evaluate this integral. And the key thing here is we're going to leave our answer in the form ln k, where k is an exact simplified fraction. Clearly, we're going to use the answer to part A to help us, because the answer to part A, uh, the, that written as partial fractions, will help us evaluate the integral. OK, let's work through this. We want to write down the following. x plus 1 over x plus 11 over x plus 4, x subtract 3 as partial fractions. It's one of our standard results, and it's a over the first factor plus b over the second factor. You get one mark in the exam for writing that. Then you'll get a mark for your next line, which would be to make this have the common denominator of x plus 4, x minus 3, and equate the tops, which would lead us to x plus 11 is identical to a, x subtract 3 plus b x plus 4. Now we're going to let x be various things in order to work out a and b. Firstly, let x equal 3. This side would be 14. This side, this would disappear and we would get 7b, which implies, there's the implied sign, that b must be 2. Then we would let x equal negative 4. And this side, we would therefore have 7 is identical to negative 7a, which implies that a must be equal to negative 1. Now remember to express that as a sum of partial fractions at the end. Let me just tell you here, this would also usually get a mark in the exam. And I'm talking about the real exam, and we would get some marks here. So make sure at the end we therefore write that x plus 11 over x plus 4, x subtract 3 is the same thing as saying, well, it's negative 1 over this plus 2 over that. We would usually write the positive first, so 2 over x subtract 3, subtract 1 over x plus 4, the first part done. Next part, we're going to evaluate the following integral. We're going to realise that in part A, we express this as partial fractions. So we're going to straight away say that this is the integral between 0 and 2 of 2 over x subtract 3, subtract 1 over x plus 4, with respect to x dx. OK, we should know these integrals, they're standard ln integrals. OK, the integral of this is 2 ln modulus x subtract 3. And we'll do more integration in the integration section, but you should know these. Subtract ln modulus x plus 4. Put a square brackets around when you have done your integration and put your limits on the right-hand side now between 0 and 2. Now we're going to substitute in 2 and substitute in 0 and subtract. So here we would get 2 ln of 1 because when you put 2 in you get minus 1, but you modulus it. So 2 ln 1 subtract ln 6, and we're going to subtract from that the answer when you put 0 in, which would be 2 ln 3, subtract ln 4. OK? And ln 1 is 0, so there's nothing there. So we're going to get ourselves the answer here, negative ln 6, OK? Subtract 2 ln 3 plus ln Four. OK, now before we start trying to combine LUNs, etc., let's bring up this power of 2 up here, so it's 3 squared. So, so we would have this is negative LUN 6, subtract LUN of 9, bringing the 2 up, plus LUN of 4. And now we can write that. Well, I could write this as LUN 4, subtract LUN 6, subtract LUN 9. 
and obviously I can combine the loons they're being subtracted as ln of 4 over 6 times 9 which simplifies 6 times 9 is 54 and so I could simplify that as ln 2 over 27. The reason I wrote it like this, make sure you look up here, you want it in the form ln k where k is an exact simplified fraction and we're done for that question there.